good X and good Y will not have the same level of satisfaction, same level of priority in the minds of a consumer. More and more when you start consuming something, it starts coming down to a negative value. That is very, very important. Why? Because you will not be able to see an intersection happening at any of the junctures here. When the marginal utility becomes negative, the total utility declines. Good morning and welcome to the third session in Chapter 2 Theory of Consumer Behavior in 2nd PUC Economics where we are going to see about a very important concept called as the law of diminishing marginal utility. Now this is a very important question again which is most probably found in this particular chapter and quite repeated also as a concept and question in the exam. Explain the law of diminishing marginal utility with the help of a table and diagram. So let's first try to understand the meaning of this law of diminishing marginal utility. According to this law, as the consumer increases the consumption of any one commodity, keeping constant consumption of all other, the marginal utility of the variable commodities must eventually decline. Now look at the statement itself. As you start consuming a particular product more and more, now let's say that I like ice creams, so I keep on consuming ice cream to an extent which is more than my sufficient level. Beyond the point what happens is that I completely get saturated bored with that ice cream because I'm not able to consume more. So what happens even though I keep on getting more and more ice creams but then the satisfaction out of that particular extra unit which I'm consuming starts declining. So that's exactly where the law of diminishing marginal utility. When I say that that diminishing that means that the more you consume extra the more the activity that is in terms of the factor starts diminishing it starts coming down the utility value starts coming down here now the law can be explained with an example now what is that example a college girl comes home and she starts drinking water to quench her thirst naturally why because she has come out from the hot sun so she will be feeling thirsty so what does she do is that she wants to drink water the first glass of water she drinks she gets a great satisfaction great utility why because she consumes the entire glass of water she's really very thirsty so what she would do she would consume the entire factor immediately when she drinks the second glass of water, the extent of thirst should have reduced. So the second glass of water, she might be able to consume to a satisfaction level of 70 or 75 percent. She doesn't want the entire glass of water. So what she will do, she would drink that glass second glass only to a certain extent that is not actually providing her a hundred percent satisfaction now when we move therefore what happens the utility value as she would derive from the third fourth fifth would start declining to a great extent so that's why we say when she takes the third glass it will be lesser than the second glass in this way the additional utility from extra glass will go on decreasing. It will start coming down. So by the time she goes for the fifth glass, it might not be even required at all. Why? Because by the second glass itself, she has achieved her satisfaction level. She has achieved what she exactly wanted. So that's why we say this as the factor of diminishing marginal utility. Now, if she continues to take more and more glass, the marginal utility will fall zero and sometimes it will tend to go towards a negative. I would say after the fourth glass, not at all needed. I don't want water at all. I I'm done I'm sufficient enough so automatically from a zero that marginal utility will start dipping and become 
negative altogether. The above examples can be illustrated with the help of a diagram. Let's go further. Let's try to see here. Number of glasses consumed at the first glass. Utility value is 12. Marginal is also the same. The next glass, what happens here? The total utility becomes 20 right and then it becomes marginal utility becomes 8 now the next glass the total utility is 26 but then the marginal utility starts becoming 6 it's now decreasing so as this starts going up this would start coming down so how is that possible you can see here 20 minus 12 8 26 minus 26 30 minus 26 4 30 minus 30 0 28 minus 30 minus minus 2. So from 0, it has gone down to a negative value altogether. So that's what we say that the total utility and will completely dip towards that particular factor. Now, let's look into the graph, which is very important here. Why? Because total utility would tend to increase to a certain extent and dip but then the marginal utility value will come to a zero and then become negative so it starts declining over a period of time that's what is very very important when you understand the law of diminishing marginal utility over a period of time it will start decreasing and come down to zero the next one the above table represents that the consumer derives 12 units of utility from the first glass and as it starts coming down the utility value will almost come down to that of zero the marginal utility becomes negative when it reaches the sixth glass so as I, we were discussing in this factor more and more when you start consuming something it starts coming down to a negative value altogether so that's why we would not expect in terms of consumption going higher and higher now the total utility goes on increasing at a decreasing rate and after a stage it begins to decline now when the marginal utility is zero now let's assume that zero the total utility is constant and then it reaches a maximum value when the marginal utility becomes negative the total utility declines from 30 to 28 so there you would start seeing a decrease coming into picture now the above diagram that what we saw where that was the ox was the axis where we measured the quantity OY was where we were measuring the utility. So OX and OY as we are drawing, this is O where in the OX we were measuring the quantity and OY we were measuring the utility value. So the total utility curve is given by TU, marginal utility curve is given by MU. The TU rises upward as you have seen in the graph, it went up and later it starts sloping downward. The MU curve slopes downwards and goes further down to that of a negative scenario altogether. Now, with that, we move to the next important concept called as the features of indifference curves, which is very important. The first feature is that the higher the indifference curve represents a higher level of satisfaction and lower the indifference curve factor. That is lower the indifference, lower is the satisfaction. Let us see that in a graph. We have seen it very, very clearly. Here, if you see higher the indifference curve, higher the values, it starts going up like this. Higher will be the level of satisfaction. Lower the indifference curve. When I start coming downwards, lower will be the satisfaction levels. The next one, indifferent curves are downward sloping from left to right. Why they are downward sloping? Because the factors will start from a peak and then it will start coming downwards. So definitely it will start sloping downwards like this, but it will not touch the axis, the x-axis will not become complete zero. It will just slope downwards from left to right followed by indifference curve cannot intersect each other. Let's look into the graph, which means to say that good X and good Y will not have the same level of satisfaction, same level of priority in the minds of a consumer. So that is why you will not be able to see an intersection happening. So you will not be able to see that both of these curves are trying to intersect each other. That's not 
possible at all. So that's why the intersection is not happening here. This is very, very important for all of us to know here. That is very, very important. Why? Because you will not be able to see an intersection happening at any of the junctures here. An indifference curve must always be convex to the origin. This is another important factor and not concave. You cannot see a graph like this. You will always see a convex. You cannot see a graph like this. This is not possible at all. So the indifference curve will never be concave. That cannot be on the opposite side. It is always convex because it's always close to the margin. It starts from a peak and then it starts going downwards. Now with this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe all the information shared in this session will be of a great help and resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we shall discuss more about different topics of microeconomics. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.